Today we're taking a look at Figma sites. We're going to do a little showcase, build a small little website, and I'm going to give you my feedback on what I think of this new feature, the good, the bad, and that. Brother, uh, what's that? Let's get started. So we can go up to the top in our dashboard and hit the drop down arrow. We have the site option now in beta, so we'll select that. From here, we can create a site or we can take a look at these templates. They actually have a decent amount of them in here. It doesn't look like they have any kind of wireframes or like get started files. It just looks like finished templates that you can edit. Uh, so we're just going to go to the blank site and select that. They give you a brief onboarding to get you started, kind of showing you where everything's at. Most of the stuff you're already familiar with, like the properties panel over here on the right. So they just kind of dive you right in and just show you where all the new stuff is at. Uh, so here we are with our blank site. I've quickly just given it a name here in the top left. I'm just going to call it first Figma website for now. Lately, I've been using a lighter colored pasteboard, so I'm just going to paste that color code in. And it automatically adjusts this here in the center, which is pretty nice. So we start off with a desktop version and a mobile version, and we can just delete the mobile if you would like. And you can add different breakpoints here with the plus in this kind of upper right of this kind of section. And we can add custom ones, but we're just pretty much going to need tablet and mobile for most projects. You can hit the preview button here or in the top right. Your properties panel is basically like it is normally over here. Some of the things look maybe a little bit differently, but you can pretty much customize everything as normal. Over here on the left, we have this kind of new menu where we have the option to publish. We have our web pages section, so we can add and remove those here. We can also edit the settings. And then we have our layers panel. Over here on the left below the Figma icon, we have our file. Then we have the insert menu, which allows you to access these different components that they have pre-built or you can access your libraries if you have any. And then you have the search option. Looks like there's an AI coming soon. And then we have CMS coming soon, which is great to see. And then down here at the bottom, we can click Site Settings. Now, if you've used Framer before, this looks very similar. You can edit your general settings. You can add some things like your fave icon. And then you can add some custom code. And you also have this for each individual page as well to step up the SEO game just a little bit. But let's go back to the file. Real quickly, I wanted to glance back over here at this icon. Make is coming soon. Chat with an AI or write code to make designs interactive. That caught my eye in editing. I just want to mention that could be really cool. Uh, it kind of seems like vibe coding in a way. I don't know exactly what they're going to do with this, but that could be intriguing. So keep your eye out for that in the future. So let's actually start to make a design here. So right away we have a 1280 by 1080 website. Uh, let's just go ahead and shorten that to 856. So it looks a little bit more like a typical screen size. And what we're gonna wanna do is create our first section. So I'm just gonna grab the frame with F on the keyboard and just drag one out. So you can see it will apply a temporary gray fill to it. Now with that frame in there, I'm just gonna call this section. With that frame created, let's select the desktop now. And the first thing I want to do is set the flow. So like our auto layout direction. In this case, our website's going to go from top to bottom. So we're going to do a vertical flow. And I'm going to have zero padding on the top, bottom, left, and right. Now we can select our section and we can actually set this to fill the container now that we have that set up. And we can also fill the container there as well if we want. So now if I hit preview, you'll see that that gray expands to fill the entire size and width of our browser. So, so far behaving pretty similar to that of Framer. Uh, but for now, let's take this and let's actually set this with an image for the background. Nice little architecture style image here from Unsplash. Next, we're gonna need a heading. So to speed this up, I'm going to go over to insert and then I'm going to go to libraries and I'm going to be using my design system eight point and I'm just going to throw a few things in here like some text and maybe a button. If you're tired of designing from scratch on all of your new projects, meet eight point. Eight point is an ever growing design system for Figma. 
A-Point has a soft four-point grid to make sure everything aligns properly, customizable components to give you control in your designs, and variables to swap themes with ease. This isn't just a one-time release, as 8-Point will be updated on a monthly basis, and once you purchase 8-Point, you have free updates for life. If you want to check out 8-Point, you can go over to 8-Point.io, that's 8PT.io, or there's a link at the top of the description. And if you use code 8Point25, you can get 25% off on our early summer sale, which ends on the 27th of May. And now, back to the video. All right, so right now we have the text and button, and they're positioned absolutely, which means they're just going to stick exactly where they are in reference to the constraints. So if I move this button a little closer here in the corner, when the browser scales in, it's always going to be 53 points from the top and 68 from the left. And this is where auto layout comes in. We can use that to make this a little bit more responsive. So if we take a look at what we currently have, you can see nothing is really responding other than the image in the background because it's filling. So let's grab the section and we'll quickly throw a vertical layout on this as well. And we can adjust the padding to something more normal like 32 and we'll do 80 on the top and 32 on the bottom. And now we have a more standard layout. And if I grab my text and I were to actually change this now to fill container, and I have that in a group, so I need to set the other one to fill as well. And we were to add a bunch of text, just like this. Now, when we preview this, you can see that it's going to wrap the text really nicely. And all we need to do is add a breakpoint for something like tablet or mobile and scale the type down and we have a more responsive layout. I'm quickly going to just update the design just a little bit with some type and make it look a little bit nicer. We're not gonna go too crazy into this and I'll get more into that in just a moment. So what I'm gonna do now is I don't want my text to actually fill the entire thing. I wanna set a max width, so let's do that real quick. So here on the width, we'll just add a max width and I'm gonna set that to 800 so that wraps nicely there. Let's go ahead and throw in a navigation. I'm gonna drag that outside of our section and you'll notice that snaps right up top since on our desktop we have that flow set up. And here I'll just customize this real quick. Finally, the last thing, let's go ahead and break this for a mobile layout. So we'll just add that break point in and we'll do a few quick adjustments like changing the type to something more appropriate for this size. I think that looks pretty good. And then for the navigation, I'm just gonna hide all of our links and then I'll change this alignment to auto so that it pushes our hamburger menu over. So when we get close to the mobile layout, it will automatically adjust there. So I think I've showed off a decent amount of how this is functioning in Figma. And we've come to the point now where I don't wanna go any further with its design. I know this is not a great design by any means, uh, but I think it does a good job of visually showcasing what is capable with this feature. Uh, but I don't want to make a full-blown tutorial on this. And the reason for that is because I don't think this feature is quite there yet. So I wanted to go through this in the video and showcase it and really get hands-on before I gave you my opinion on this feature and where I think it's going to go. And so now let's go ahead and publish this. I'm going to update this link. Here in the browser, it looks just like it did in Figma. But the main problem, and I'm sure you've seen some people talk on this, is the source code. The source code is not ideal. It's just using a bunch of divs. Uh, it's not really saying, hey, this is a heading. It's not saying this is a heading to, this is a button. It really doesn't know what's going on and just this is the whole site right here, this one line of code just full of divs. Uh, it's just a cluttered, soupy mess and it's just a bit clunky. So that's my first complaint is the code is terrible. The next thing is it's just lacking features. We can't set things like the viewport height, the rim value, nothing like that. Uh, you can't set and specify, hey, this is a heading or this is an H2. There's none of that in here. And of course it's in beta. And I'm sure in about a year's time, this feature would be really good. It's probably gonna put out some pretty clean code as you would expect with a Figma feature. It's gonna be polished, I'm sure. But right now I would not recommend it for building professional websites instead. I'd recommend something like Framer instead if you're looking for a very similar experience. This is more polished, has more control, and I actually have a full course on that here on YouTube. I'll link that on the screen now. And I have an affiliate code for Framer in the description as well. 
I even built the eight point website with this. It's just a really good tool. So I would recommend this in the meantime and probably for the foreseeable future, unless Figma Sites gets a huge update or drastically changes in some way. But that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like, subscribe for more content like this. If you want to design faster and eliminate repetitive design, check out 8point.io. That's 8pt.io. The link is at the top of the description. And don't miss out on our early summer sale. Use code 8point25. That's 8pt25 to get 25% off. And as always, have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.